Okay, now today's video is going to focus on the five different groups. Well, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, it is of the utmost importance in your study of the Bible that you all become fully aware of this most important fact. And the fact that from the first chapter of Matthew to the last chapter of Revelation, there are five, that's right, five different groups or classes of people that are addressed. All right, and here they are. The first one is to unsaved Israelites who were under the law. The second group, to saved Israelites who were under the law before they became members of the body of Christ. Number three, to unsaved Gentiles who were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and not under the law. And the fourth group, carnal saints and babes who were members of the body of Christ and the fifth group to those who were of full age called the faithful in Christ Jesus. All right, the words of the Lord Jesus in Matthew 15, 24 and Matthew 10, 5 to 8 should be self-explanatory. Christ definitely declared that he himself was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and instructed the 12 apostles just as definitely to go not in the way of the Gentiles, but rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Lord Jesus Christ was sent to Israel with a twofold message, that is, to present the kingdom of heaven to the nation with its rulers and to offer salvation to individual Israelites. Now, in Matthew 8, 12, Christ called the Israelites both saved and unsaved, where it says, the children of the kingdom. And in John 8, 37, he said to the unsaved Israelites, ye are the seed of Abraham. In Acts 3, 25, Peter addressed the unsaved Israelites as the children of the covenant. In Luke 1, 16 and Luke 1, verse 80, we read that John the Baptist appeared to Israel. In John 1.31, we read that John the Baptist baptized with water. Why? That Christ might be made manifest to Israel. John the Baptist baptized with water that Christ might be made manifest to Israel. Now, you know why baptism was introduced, but this has <laughs> nothing to do with the body of Christ. All right. In Acts 11, 1 through 8, we learned that some of the 12 apostles contended with Peter because he preached to an uncircumcised Gentile. About, actually, that was about seven years after Christ died and was resurrected. Now, from all of this and many other scriptures, we should know the significance of the statement in Romans 15, 8, that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision and should know that from Matthew 1.1 1, 1 to Acts 11.18, God's order was to the Jew only. However, in Acts 11.18, we read that God did something for the Gentiles. Now, some of the messages in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts were addressed to unsaved Israelites or Jews, and some of them were addressed to saved Israelites or Jews. Surely we must consider this if we would intelligently interpret and apply these scriptures, right? For if we don't, we will just continue in the confusion that has resulted in all of the denominations of today. Now in Galatians 1, verses 11 through 18, we learn that the Apostle Paul was chosen by the risen Christ by a special revelation from heaven to preach the grace of Christ to heathen. The Apostle Paul tells us of his call to go to the Gentiles in Acts 22, 17 to 21, and then again in Romans 15, 6. In many respects, the gospel of grace message that Paul proclaimed to Gentiles, not under the law, differed from the gospel of the kingdom messages that Christ and the Twelve proclaimed to saved and unsaved Israelites. Therefore, to preach many of the messages of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the first nine chapters of Acts to the Gentiles not under the law actually is to pervert God's gospel of grace to Gentiles. Let that sink in. 
Now in applying the truth of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the truth in the first nine chapters of Acts to Gentiles, whether saved or unsaved, we must keep in mind a particular group of people that is addressed in the scriptures we are studying. Many messages which the Lord's servants proclaim to backslidden Israel well, are not intended by God to be included in the salvation message of Christ for Gentiles, not under the law. We should keep in mind the statements concerning these Gentiles in many different verses. For instance, read the second chapter of Ephesians, as well as Ephesians 4.18. In these verses, we learn that the Gentiles to whom the Apostle Paul preached the gospel of the grace of God were strangers from the covenants and aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, alienated from the life of God and dead in trespasses and sins. So surely any preacher who preaches to such people bring forth meat for repentance. The message which the Lord gave to John the Baptist for Israel is out of the will of God. A dead man alienated from the life of God could not bring forth fruit, but he could be made alive without doing anything. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 4-8, and Romans 6, 23. Okay, so, so far we have dealt with the first three classes of people. Unsaved Israelites who are under the law, saved Israelites who are under the law before they became members of the body of Christ, and unsaved Gentiles who are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and not under the law. Now, here are the fourth and fifth classes. All right, the, the fourth group. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 2 to 3, where it reads, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to hear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? All right. And then the fifth group we find in Ephesians 1.1 1, 1 and Ephesians 4.13 to 14, where it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Okay, these scriptures that I just finished reading should convince any student of the Bible that Paul would never have written to the carnal Corinthians what he wrote to the faithful saints at Ephesus. Let us note the last three verses of Hebrews 5 which I'll read right now, Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their sense exercised to discern both good and evil. All right, here in this portion of scripture, we are told of the two classes within the body of Christ. Members of the body of Christ who could take only the milk of the word, God's truth for babes, and those who are full age, who could understand the deep things or the meat of God's word. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, we learn that the newborn babes should have the milk of the word. Note this verse. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Now, you must keep in mind at all times, the saints in Corinth, the Corinthians, were just as much saints as were the saints in Ephesus. The difference was, the saints at Corinth were carnal and unable to take the strong meat which we find in the Apostle Paul's messages to the Ephesians and Colossians. Now, of course, the full-age saints will feed on the milk as well as, the, as on the meat. But strong meat belongeth to saints of full age, and carnal saints must limit themselves to a milk diet. And remember this, a love for religion, or ritualism, or sectarianism, such as a love for your denomination, will keep a saint carnal just as much as the love of the world. Never forget that. Read that sentence over and over and over again from the written message on the Lion and Lamb ministry. 
The Corinthians were sectarians. They were denominationalists. The Ephesians and Colossians accepted the divine truth of Ephesians 4, 3 to 6 concerning the one body, the one Lord, and the one baptism. And that's not with water. All right. Now, in Ephesians 1, 13, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul declares that men are saved and sealed by hearing and believing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So therefore, here right now, while you're watching this video is declared unto you the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And that is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And it's 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. So what do you got to do? Believe. Believe. Believe that today. Okay. All right. So there you have it. Please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide because the time is short. And grace be to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for now.